do UMR's True Detective Reviews with Episode 6, uh, Church in Ruins. As Mark, as Katie. Hey. Um, you know there's only like eight episodes, so there's only two left. Oh shit. Yeah. That makes, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Um, and wow, we're really getting to it. Uh, okay, the way, that, the way this works, I didn't even think about my writing. The way this works is, um... Uh, Right away uh, at the beginning of this, in case you haven't seen this episode, we're going to tell you what we thought of it between 1 and 5. And then after that, we're just going to tell you what we thought of Church in Ruins, just like you just watched it with us. So just spoil heavy. Yeah. So, uh, what, you, what was your first impressions? And if you want to give a little bit of a synopsis overall, first impressions in your 1 through 5. I wish that you had thought of it. I don't know if this is high, but a three point nine. I, wow! I really liked this episode. It it had me hooked. Like the dialogue, just everything happening, had me hooked from the beginning. Like I, I usually like kind of look around at other stuff, play my phone every once in a while, but I didn't do that at all this episode. I watched it. I liked it. It's a good one, and I'm gonna see your three point nine and call. I'm gonna go with three point nine. Uh, I'm gonna stick right with you on that. Very frank, heavy episode, mm -hmm. and I loved it. Like, slow moments with Frank, or, well, no, it was more Ray. It was a Ray heavy episode, too. It was, um, yeah, it was kind of both of them, but their downtime has never bored me much. Like, their, when it's those two, when you got Vince Vaughn and uh, Colin Farrell's scenes, I'm so in, and I really like this episode. A lot of Colin Farrell stuff, and probably one of my favorite scenes with him, yeah, and we'll get to that later, uh, okay, uh, so 3.9, uh, like and subscribe, uh, get out of here if you don't want to get any, uh, uh, spoils, and, um, alright, cool, uh, then let's start with the, the first big thing of the, of the episode, we usually get them in a bar together, but we got them in Frank's house, with their fucking guns pointing at each other under the table. Ray and Frank. The, the morning coffee with Ray coming in and holding the gun at Frank. What'd you think? I, oh, that was so good. Just so fucking oh, good. So and it shows how fucking powerful and smart Frank is. Just, he was so clever and good with that situation. Yeah. He is a fucking boss. No, Ray walked in there ready to kill him. And it, they calmed it down. Frank diffused the situation without appearing weak at all. Like, yeah. I actually think that is the best acting I've seen on the show at all, was that scene. Like, I think that is the best I've seen. And especially when it comes to dialogue. I, I almost have to give a negative for this scene. Because people can't speak that well. Like, there's some amazing dialogue. I wouldn't just buy that somebody says shit like that. Like... The writing is so impeccable in that scene that I'm like, I would never have thought that's, to say stuff like that. That's why I like it, though, because oh, yeah. it shows that these people are fucking witty. They are, on top of their shit, they're smart as fuck. Like, just how good yeah. they are with everything. Uh, yeah, no, that was a really, really good scene. Um, uh, were you surprised with how that scene went down? Or did you think it was going to go the I will, way? I mean... Kind of, I, I kind of expected it to go that way. It, you always have this thought in the back of your mind that they could flip anything and just kill anybody, but I, I feel like not yet. So I just, yeah, I wasn't. I thought they were going to pull the clock away, but I didn't know they'd kind of flip it. I thought they'd go more business deal with each other. Yeah, uh, I, I had no clue. I couldn't have guessed at all. I, w I was fifty percent. He's gonna, somebody's gonna end up shooting the other one, and I was 50% them calming it down. I couldn't read that situation at all, how it was gonna go down. Let's stick with Vince Vaughn, let's stick with Frank. We got, um, a few other little scenes, and then we have the Mexican standoff. Which was when he walks into, he gets the information to go into this house, and walks in, and then it's the guys who tried to extort him the episode before... Just guns out, like, sup, what are you doing in our house? Uh, and so just that scene, and then their talk, when they're making the deal to talk to the girl, what did you think of that? 
I, I, I can't. It's hard without talking about the next scene, but the, <laughs> I think that these guys think that they're in charge. Yeah. And that's weird for me because Frank has such a presence and it just so powerful, everything he says, and he's so smart and so calculating. And these guys are just like, uh, no, we're totally in charge of this whole situation. And that kind of blew my mind. And then we can just move right on to the meeting. <laughs> I wrote down meeting before he goes up to the place to meet the girl. I wrote, like, meeting. And then I see the dead body and I put it in quotation marks. <laughs> like, oh, shit. That's not really a meeting. <laughs> uh, that was... I... Unexpected, I guess. I didn't, yeah. I didn't quite see that coming, but it, it took Frank down a peg, which was weird. Yeah. To it, have these people actually, like, fuck him. Actually, she was talking to the cops. We called her. Uh, yeah, we're still gonna have the deal with you. Fuck you. And Frank doesn't do anything. Like, whoa, I'm... that surprised. I thought he was just gonna go bam, like shoot the main dude. That surprised the shit out of me. Well, and he can't though. Like, no. he has to be strategic about it. And I'm really excited to see where they're gonna bring it. But I'm still just in awe of those what guys are going down there. Happened. Yeah. Well, when I see her, bo when I saw her body, I was shocked. I was shocked that she was already dead. I, I was, I went. <gasps> yeah, I really thought Frank was gonna like really pull ahead of all of the detectives in this case, and <laughs> he's been doing better than them most of the time. So. Yeah. Yeah, but that really, really surprised me, and that knocked him back. Yeah, put him down a peg, like you said. That's totally accurate. Moving on to Ray. Uh, <laughs> painful Ray episode. Oh, painful Ray so episode. So painful. Let's jump to the first one of him meeting the dude, seeing him face to face, looking him in the eyes, the the rapist of his wife, like, ooh, when you're talking about dialogue, you're talking about writing, that's what we're talking about. Like, that's the writing, like, the shit he says, like, I will take all your flesh off of the cheese grater. Cock first, like holy god! I paraphrase, but that's about what he'd say. He he delivered so perfectly too. Like he felt it. You, oh, you were so mad with him, but at the same time, I was like afraid for this oh. guy. Like yeah, well, this guy's a coward. I mean, he rapes women. Like he's not exactly the type of badass that that Ray is. And yeah, and he Ray had such anger. In just this crazy shit going on with his face, I would be pissed myself. I yeah. was like, "Ooh, I fucked you. I fucked with you." Uh oh. <laughs> but I'm I'm excited to see how that pulls out because they're gonna have to shut that storyline, and I can't think of a way other than him, him walking in jail and like Samuel Jackson a time to kill, shooting him in the face. Oh, like I don't know how they're gonna get. I, that. I feel like that will happen if he find like. If she's a bitch and tells him that it's not his kid. I think I think that's gonna happen anyway. So like maybe he's gonna only do it if if the girl backs out, which of course is the next scene. The yeah, I was talking to the talking to the uh, lady or his uh, wife, but but yeah, I, I feel like he's gonna do that anyways. Like he has too much Animosity. He already thought he killed him. Like, he's yeah. got unfinished business killing this guy. But I don't know. That one, I I cannot guess how that's going to play out. I don't know. And then, of course, the um, uh, watching friends with this kid to take it back to life moment. That was actually a rather nice scene. I really like that scene. That was, no, that was painful. Yeah. And with his child and just how, like, unenthused his kid is. Like, even though he does actually try really hard, he just doesn't try to figure out his kid anymore, but that's also a hard age to do. That oh, yeah, that. definitely. But, like... All right, I'll take it back. That was a rough scene. It was painfully awkward, just him, like, asking the lady what she's writing and... Well, he doesn't say anything. He's like, oh, you like watching Friends? <laughs> the hell? <laughs> right now, friends? Like, what are you writing down over there? Like, yeah. Uh, that was a pretty rough scene to watch. Which caused him to go off... Off the wagon. The last big Ray scene. 
Holy shit. Seeing people down drugs like that. Holy shit. Oh, that was rough. Especially after being clean for like... Like, yeah, what, 40 something days? Yeah. Like, yeah, clean I mean, enough. Yeah. I don't know. It just, not that it's, it, it kind of surprised me, I guess. But it looked like he wanted to kill himself. Like, yep, that's trying, what I thought he was, he was doing. Trying to kill himself with booze and cocaine. Just downs that coke like it was <laughs> like a drink. Like, just, <sighs> like he was chugging coke. Like, holy shit. Yeah, that's that was insanity. But, uh, alright, moving on, I'm just gonna, let's just hit Paul really quick and move right past him. Paul didn't have, Taylor Kitsch didn't have a lot going on, but he had a lot going on last episode. So it kind of really thought that they felt like they brought Ray in. He was diamond hunting. He, he did the lead with the diamonds. That's pretty much the only scenes we really got with him. Except for the last, which isn't him, that's everybody. But... Uh, if you have anything to go on with Paul, we can no, move right on. Let's just go on. Okay, uh, then we have Annie uh, with her knife fight training uh, when she was talking to her sister. Awesome! I'm so afraid of that. I would never fuck with her now. She's just she's, like... She's pretty fucking badass. With that knife. Oh. And of course, it came in play later, which I was like, Oh! Ah, knife fighting! What's up? Like, that made me so happy. But... Yeah, so let's get to the party. I like that scene between her and her sister, though. I really felt like all the awkwardness in kind of, like, most of it between her and her sister is gone. Like, they're still kind of a little shaky, mm -hmm. but it wasn't nearly what it was the first couple episodes. Yeah. Like, I really think that they've watered under the bridge most of that. Because the first episode was her just yelling at her sister after she busted her at that, yeah. that webcam thing. And now she's, like, getting her up for information. They're bullshitting. She's, like, helping with a case. I really like that scene. Mm hmm So. You got anything else on that before I make it to the party? <laughs> no, that my main shit's from the party, basically. Okay, the pure Molly. I don't think that was Molly. <laughs> no, not, not the way she was acting. But it is a, it is technically a hallucinogen, like, in that category. So... I, I mean, from what she was actually seeing, I guess that would make a lot of sense. Like, holy... But, like, how everyone else was acting, you mean? <laughs> yeah. But, like, her trip was fucking insane. Yeah. You found out why she hates everyone. And, like... That little flashback. Them. Yep, that explained a lot. Say nothing, and that's the beauty of this show... Is you didn't have to see anything. You it just made you assume, and it told you everything about why she acts the way she does about sex, why she can't connect, all of it because she went and looked for a unicorn in the woods with a really creepy ass dude. <laughs> like, oh man, I, I I really like that reveal. I think that was a great way to do exposition to her background and waiting till now to do it. I think that. Like, cinematically was great. Like, it's it's the... What made me appreciate how slow these episodes have been until now. Like, this is a, the perfect binge-watching show if you can binge-watch yeah, it. Which we're not. <laughs> you, you, it's so slow in the beginning, but you're getting all of this information that once it, like, yeah, clicks... Once it, that pulls it, off, it, yeah. Like, it fucking... The payoff is great. Exactly. It sets so many things in motion, makes so many things, uh, like, fall into place, and you just get it now. And she still is a badass, even though she's, like, tripping balls. Yeah, so she stabs the shit out of the dude uh, as she's trying to get the missing person out. And then uh, Paul kind of helps him out. Oh, they got the papers from that illegal dealing. Yeah. I like that, like, everyone you've been seeing in the background of all the, like, business deals you were seeing there. There's, like, so many of the side, like, background characters you saw yeah, at the party. Have, yeah. And dealing with other characters, like, people with that you've case. seen with Frank and, like, people you've seen with the mayor and shit like yeah, that. Yeah, all He's... that stuff. Uh, yeah, so, I really like this ending. I think it was really good. And uh, seeing the party, like, I was, like, I had... I totally didn't think it was going to be that much of an orgy. I'm like, oh, it's going to be like 
guys taking girls off the rooms. I didn't think it would be like a scene from Spartacus where it's just like sex all the way around. Like that's a prize to me. That was the other thing I liked the, about her like being fucked up while she was walking through was like nothing was like blunt in your face grotesque sex. Oh yeah, no, like, that was a good weirdly faded in the background that like you saw it, you acknowledged, you understood what was happening, but you weren't just like, Oh, there's sex happening and I can't watch what's happening. Yeah. Like it wasn't so in your face like so many shows where it's just like like again, like Spartacus where it's like sex and you're like, Jeez, I like mm-hmm. sex, but well, that's a lot. No, I really you're right, I would with the way they did it, and it going back to her face, and then kind of it's all blurry. I thought that was a good way to do it, too. Yeah. Where it totally showed us how grotesque everything was without being overly grotesque. Yeah. That was good. I really liked it. Um, okay, I I think we're good. Any closing thoughts? I think it was a long review, but we had a lot to say, so... Uh, At least we got it out on time this time. <laughs> yeah! Um... Again, uh, like and subscribe and share. If you have any friends who uh, watch True Detective or should watch True Detective, tell them about us um, or not. I mean, if you hate what we're saying. But if you hate us, tell us in the comments. <laughs> no one ever comments that you hate us, so let us know. Or if you like it, comment. Uh, just if you comment, we'll comment back. Um, like and subscribe. Anything you want to say about the episode or anything else before we say the most important thing? Nope. Excited for next episode? So excited. Yep, me too. I'm excited for these last two episodes, something hardcore. Um, <laughs> do, 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 do. Bye! Bye.